Hi, I've been spending the last few months creating some new background brushes that I'm just having a lot of fun uh, setting up backgrounds for different portraits that I've been doing. Um, I wanted to make these brushes work off pressure and the hue saturation and value on the different brushes. They they lay down kind of a scattered uh, brush stroke and there's, as you can see, I've got them laid out over here. There's quite a few different brush strokes and I combine most of these on each one of the paintings on different layers. But you'll see I get very different results by playing with the layers, their uh, opacity and the settings of uh, colorize, multiply, that type of thing. What I want to do is just show you some examples of the backgrounds and show you how a few of the brushes work. If you decide to purchase my brushes, you can go to my website at www.tanasart.com and they'll be available there. Once the brushes are purchased, I'll have a full video showing step-by-step -step how I create these backgrounds. But here's some examples of backgrounds that I've created by just using my c category of brushes I've created. Here, the first one is this mauve laid out and I like to keep a little lightness in the center and a little darker to the outsides so that it highlights whether I'm painting a flower in here or uh, a person's portrait or a pet. You'll see the brushes, the brush strokes give you a lot of depth and you'll see a lot of different types of strokes. So that's the first one. Here is another one with a much richer darker background that um, I was playing around with the reds and the pale oranges and you get a totally different look by how you arrange your layers like I said and your opacities. Here's another uh, done in a lot lighter colors and because I use different brushes on different areas a totally different look from those others. Another example of some browns you'll see different chunky strokes. Um, these brushes are just a lot of fun to work with. I play around um, and can spend an evening just creating a bunch of different looks for the backgrounds. One of the brushes is called Glitter. It stands out a little bit more right here on this particular uh, background. And then there's another called um, Confetti and that's some of these bigger strokes that are scattered uh, in here. And by layering them different and playing with the lighting and the saturation, which I will show you in the complete, you get totally different looks. Here you see that glitter brush again and some of the confetti, the cloudy brush, all different brushes and blenders being used on different layers. Uh, this one I just created today as an example for someone. So. Um, just trying to give you an idea of the fun you can get out of just these few brushes and the different looks you can achieve. I'll show you a couple how they work. I'll open a new canvas 875 by 875. I've got it at 250 pixels an inch. I like to use the color, the gray coloring because um, I just don't like a really white stark white background in my eyes when I'm working. So this first brush is um, my background scatter base, I call it. And you'll see what I mean. I, I usually pick a lighter color to start with because some of that center ends up uh, lighter in the end product. So as you can see, this scatters a bunch of little short dabs all over and it picks up a saturation value and hue from the setting from what I chose here and the settings that I've set up on the color variability on the brush. 
So as you can see, you can lay down that first base quite rapidly, and you can play around, even with just this brush, darker around the edges if you want, by just changing just the slightest bit your your uh, setting on your color wheel and I'm getting darker corners and just playing with this base brush. Now I work every brush on a different layer and when I get, show you the complete video of how to use these brushes you'll see why. I might change the hue over to a little more towards the oranges and I might go down a little darker and use this next brush called my cloud scatter and on this layer you'll see the variability of the colors in this brush are laid down and the size of the cloud is very small if you press lightly and bigger if you press heavy. Now the reason I work with layers is because if you feel it's too dark on what you're working on right now, you can always go down and lower the opacity and it blends in a m little more with the brush with the strokes that are laid down behind. I'll show you one more brush. Um, let's go down to my um, Impressionist Grunge brush and let's change it way over to more of an orangey gold and I'll go down a little farther. Um, this isn't exactly the way I would change the colors on doing the backgrounds I showed you previously, but I, I want to show you how you get different colors and a different style of stroke to start laying in a really nice look for your background. You'll see with each brush you'll get changes here, you'll get changes in the sizes and the opacities at their basic settings and they work just fine at that playing in your color wheel. So I can go way down to this very bright and put some up into one corner and paint along. I think you can see already the interest you'll get from playing with some of these brushes. Um, and just changing a little tiny bit on your color wheel and you get a layer of big strokes, little strokes, and depending on how you like the stroke that you're getting, you can leave it dark or you can lighten it in or you can play with gel and colorizing and there's just so much to what you can do and like I say once the brushes have been purchased I'll show you exactly the steps to get the kind of backgrounds I showed you at the beginning of this video. I hope this has piqued your interest. There's a lot of other brushes that are really fun to play with and I demonstrate them on the complete video after, there, after there's a purchase made. So hope you enjoyed this and come see me at my website at tanazart.com. Thank you.